What's happening, my Jack family? Coach Scott here, jacked at the40.com and shredded at the40.com. Welcome to another episode of the Jacked at the 40 podcast. Today, I would absolutely love to get a discussion going with you and my fellow men over 40 about how the excess fat that you're carrying, whether it's five pounds, 10 pounds, 20 pounds, 30 pounds, 50 pounds or more, how it's affecting you on an emotional level, how it's affecting your confidence, your pride, your mood, your zest for life. So if you could please take a moment to get raw and real, to be vulnerable and share how you're feeling down in the comment section below. It's gonna help a lot of our fellow men over 40 realize that they're not alone, that we're all going through similar struggles or some of us have already been through those struggles and can share our experiences. That's what I'm gonna be doing here in this video. I'm going to be getting very raw and real, very open and honest with you guys here about my own transformation journey. And this really sparks from, uh, I'm in the process of writing the Jacked After 40 book. I can't wait to get it out into the bookstores and in your hands. Uh, and in that book, I, I share a lot of my personal experiences, especially uh, that moment, that rock bottom moment that turned everything on a dime for me and I haven't looked back ever since. It was 10 years ago, it was a cold winter morning in January. Um, got out of the shower, freezing cold, can't wait, hurry up, get my, my clothes on, jump in my underwear, pull on my socks and then try to get on my pants and the button, just struggling to get that button done up. It was size 32 inch jeans, which may not seem like that big of a deal. Some of you guys like, 32 inch jeans, I live, I love that being 32 inch jeans. That's a goal of mine to get there. But honestly, I had no business wearing those jeans. And to put things into perspective, I currently wear 30 inch jeans. And I basically, I don't swim in them, but I've got lots of room in those, uh, those jeans. So I got about a 29 inch waist. Um, so having size 32 inch jeans, struggling to get them on. And you know it wasn't at the waistline. I'm not doing those, that button up at my, at my belly button there. It's below the belly button. I was carrying around 50 pounds of excess fat at that time. And I had struggled with that weight. Like I knew I had weight to lose. I was struggling for a good like 10 years to drop that weight make a little bit of progress, make some looking somewhat decent and then gain it all back. Make a little bit of progress, gain it all back. It was yo-yoing back and forth for 10 years. I finally hit that rock bottom moment that morning when I was struggling to do up the, my jeans and I just happened to look to the side and I caught a glimpse of my side profile in the mirror. I don't think I'd ever seen my side profile. Even like, I just kind of avoided looking in the mirror because I, I didn't want to, uh, it was like the inevitable. I didn't want it to really sink in. I didn't want to experience reality, kind of blocking it out, just living on, just kind of picturing myself. I grew up lean and athletic my entire life. I didn't want to think that I didn't fit in 32 inch jeans. I didn't want to think that I was overweight. I just wanted to picture myself being lean and athletic. And it just, seeing my side profile, it was, shocking to me. It was like a stranger was looking back in the mirror. And and once again, like 50 pounds excess fat for me, for a lot of my fellow men over 40 than me, look at my physique at that point and go, oh man, you looked you looked pretty good, man. You looked you looked kind of solid. Like I was still weight training at the time, but I was eating like crap. Like my lifestyle absolutely sucked. A lot of drinking, a lot of junk food, a lot of eating in excess. Um, but yeah, it was it was a huge wake up call where it just really, really sank into me. And then I remember like that feeling, just feeling kind of disgusted with myself, uh, disappointed in myself, like how, I can't believe this is me. Like how did I let this happen? How did I get to this point? Like I should have never allowed myself to get to this point. Mine, it was a lot of stress. It was like at the time that I started gaining all that weight, I actually opened up a health club, believe it or not, like gaining all that weight and owning a gym, but I just didn't have time to work out as much myself. And it was 16 hour days. It was a lot of stress and I'd come home and I'd be, I'd have to grab some drinks. Like a lot of, a lot of my clients turn to alcohol at the end of the day to kind of, um, calm their nerves, relax, and I'm trying to break them from that habit, knowing that drinking at night is not gonna give you the best sleep, it's not good for our testosterone level, it's not gonna impact them all that much if you're just drinking in moderation, like just one or two glass, uh, drinks a 
beer uh, a night. It's not going to have that much of an impact on your testosterone, but it can have a negative impact on your sleep. And of course, those are it's extra calories. And along with those extra calories, oftentimes when you're drinking, you're going to consume excess food. Your inhibitions. Uh, get dulled and you just start making poor decisions when it comes to nutrition. So um, just a, a poor, poor lifestyle at that time. But that moment of looking in the mirror and seeing my side profile and then I was feeling disgusted and then I just kind of relaxed. I'm like, took a, I exhaled and my stomach kind of, I relaxed my abdomen and my stomach popped out even more. I'm like, oh my God, like I'm bigger than I thought it was, and at that moment I realized, man, I've probably spent the past 10 years, most of my day, like probably 99% of the day, trying to suck in my gut, just subconsciously, just trying to hold it in, number one, to fit into my jeans, and number two, because I, once I relaxed my stomach, you could really tell, even through my shirts, that uh, that I was carrying around much more fat than, than I needed to be. So, um, it, was, it was just, I, I just remember that feeling of disappointment, feeling disgusted, but physically just feeling bloated, just feeling full, like feeling full all the time, never really experiencing true hunger, like never really feeling light. It just felt like my stomach was always full. And it wasn't so much about just my stomach being expanded from the fat and everything. It was just, I was always freaking eating and it was always, I just always had food in, in my belly. So I'd go to bed feeling full, wake up feeling full, and just keep eating throughout the day. And it just was such an uncomfortable feeling. And honestly, like that's a very similar feeling to how I feel when I just gained five to 10 pounds at this point. It's like, I didn't have to gain 50 pounds to experience that full kind of feeling. Like I don't enjoy feeling kind of full and bloated all throughout the day. And that's like when I, gaining five to 10 pounds at this stage in the game, it may not, it's not much body fat that I'm carrying around, but I just don't, it's just very uncomfortable for me to feel full all the time. I just don't enjoy it at all. But other instances that I recall during those kinds, so that, that was the big wake up call where I'm like, I can't believe this is me. How did I let this happen? Enough is enough. This is the turning point. And it was in that moment where I decided that's it. For my 36th birthday, I'm gonna give myself six pack abs once again. From that point on, buckled down and made consistent effort towards achieving that goal. And I did achieve my goal of getting six pack abs for my 36th birthday. Had a photo shoot done to capture that moment. Just such an exhilarating feeling, such a feeling of pride. Um, and just admiration for the work that I had put in and an admiration for the ability of the human body, not just my body, but our ability to transform our physiques, to improve our physiques, to, to take a challenging time, to take all the struggles and turn it around, turning it into a positive and using that experience to influence others in a positive way as well, to inspire them to take action towards their goals. It was. It was a very rewarding experience to to not only transform my body, but to capture it in a photo shoot as well. So that whole process was about eight months. Uh, so it was January, my birthday was in September. So nine to eight months where um, I went through that, that fat loss process to drop that 50 pounds of excess fat um, and shared that journey all throughout. It was just, even that made it even more rewarding because every week I was sharing my, my progress updates and hearing how my journey was inspiring others. And you see it on YouTube, you see it on Facebook, you see it on Instagram, how, how people's successes like that, their transformation journey, like sharing your journey inspires others to take action themselves, especially when you're talking about why you're doing it in the process. So uh, aside from that that rock bottom moment, catching that glimpse in the mirror, feeling my stomach, like realizing, oh my God, like it felt, it was actually a relief to, to relax my stomach. Let them, like I'm actually like, wow, now I can take a full deep breath here. I've been doing, I've been shallow breathing all this time, sucking in my gut to, to kind of make myself look a little bit better. This is how you're supposed to feel through the day is like an instant relief. But um, I recall like tying up my shoes, lacing up my skates. It's funny because in the dressing, in the hockey dressing room, you often hear some of the guys who are carrying some excess fat joke around about, oh my God, like tying your shoes and like, 
<sighs> and then you take that deep breath because it's so hard, like bending over to lace up your skates. We joke about it, but I think deep inside, we're hurting. We're like, this isn't fun. It's not, it shouldn't be a struggle to lace up my skates. And even just that feeling of sitting down, like standing up, you can look okay. But as soon as you sit down, you really see that roll of fat hang over your shorts. And I, that kind of was a, a zap to my, my confidence. It sucked the confidence out of me uh, whenever I sat down and saw that roll of fat hanging out. Now it's, some people may think that's a little bit superficial, you're being a little bit too hard on yourself, but to me, again, I think a lot of it has to do with how I grew up. I grew up lean and athletic. Like being overweight and having that excess fat just wasn't congruent with who I am. Had I always grown up, uh, overweight and struggled with my weight, maybe it wouldn't have impacted me at the, in the same way, but um, it's my experience. It is, what it, it is what it is, and I've had similar conversations with one of my, uh, the members of the Jacked at the 40 Club, Sean, who was actually just over here having a bonfire last week, and he's, he gained about 10 pounds recently, and, and just talking about the same, those exact same feelings, just that feeling of just being uncomfortable in your stomach with just that little bit of excess weight. Um, it affects us. It all affects us different. Again, he was leaner when he was younger. He gained a whole bunch of fat uh, in his teenage years and, and early adult life and then has gotten absolutely freaking shredded. <laughs> it looks absolutely phenomenal. He got shredded the same time I did um, five years ago when I really stepped things up and uh, went through that final 12-week transformation. I've never looked back from that. I've never had to go through a 12-week transformation again. It's only been mini cuts from there. So five years ago, seeing Sean get absolutely crazy shredded and maintain that throughout the time and just gaining some 10 pounds recently from a little bit of excess excess eating in, in recent months and wanting to change that. Just, it's great because we're catching those feelings a lot sooner. Like we recognize that, you know what, five pounds, 10 pounds extra just doesn't feel good. It makes us feel a little bit more sluggish. We're not performing our best. We just don't feel comfortable. Not just the inner skin, it's got nothing to do with appearance overall. It's just a discomfort internally in your stomach there. So uh, really interesting to, to hear those insights from him. And again, just reassuring me that I'm not crazy. I'm not alone in this. I'm not the only one thinking like this. It's it's uh, it's great to hear from fellow men over 40 who are going through similar experiences. So looking in the mirror, feeling uncomfortable, lacing up the skates, feeling uncomfortable, sitting in a chair, feeling uncomfortable with that roll of fat. And I'll just, I'll never forget like prior, it was a summer prior to making this, this transformation journey, going to the beach and not taking my shirt off, like being embarrassed to take my shirt off. So wearing a tank top while in the water with my daughter, I mean, that's crazy. I always took pride ripping my shirt off uh, in my, as a kid, my teenage years, my early adult life, like early 20s. It was like 25 when I opened up the gym and started gaining that weight there. Uh, so it was so, and, and again, I think a lot of it has to do with not only having grown up lean and athletic, that some of this hits me at a little bit different level, but also being a fitness professional as well. You kind of think that there's this, this standard for yourself that you should be fit and kind of feeling like a little bit of a fraud when you're carrying around an extra 50 pounds of fat. But again, we're all human. Just because I'm a personal trainer doesn't mean that I am some sort of robot that this stuff comes easy to me um, or effortless to me. It's not, yeah, it was my natural way of life, but a lot of that had to do with my parents, my upbringing in there. Like they were very disciplined with our meals. Like everything was portioned out for us. When we got snacks, when we got, my mom brought home a box of cookies, it was, I got a row, my sister got a row, my dad got a row, my mom got a row. We each got a row of the cookie box. That was what we were limited to. Whereas like, now I get a box of cookies, I start having one or two, I'm like, oh shit, I'm gonna eat this whole box right now. It's, there's just no no limit, there's no portion control when it comes to that. When we bought a bag of chips, we all shared the chips together. Everything, everything was proportioned properly. Um, the right snacks, like just the, the, the meals were regular. We had a very structured, like I talk about structured nutrition now. And 
how it's been, I just talked about this in the recent video, how, how important it is to have those habits in place, to, to finish the year strong. I'm always talking about how important simple structure is when it comes to your nutrition. A lot of people say, like, that's boring, like why would you eat the same things every day? Because I have my, my shake for breakfast and then I have the eggs and veggies with a bowl of oats and berries for my second meal, my third meal is the Greek yogurt and berries. Um, a lot of people say, like, why would you have that every single day, that's boring. Well, I mean, I've always eaten the same things every day. It's like cereal for breakfast as a kid, cereal for breakfast, a little snack, uh, typically a granola bar, and a sandwich for lunch, come home, have another light snack, uh, and then we'd have dinner. Every single day, my parents, we had the same, it was like Thursday night was pasta night. Uh, Friday night would be, I think like twice a month we'd have a treat. We'd either go to like Burger King or have pizza or have Chinese food. Just a couple times a month that we would uh, eat out, dine out, or have uh, take in there. Um, one night of the week, so we'd have pasta one night, we'd have fish another night, we'd have pork chops another night, we'd have steak another night. It was like very regimented each day of the week. It just made it, again, easy for my parents. It made it easy on them knowing this is what we're having each and every night. And my dad oftentimes was the one that would make dinner. Um, oftentimes before taking me off to, to sports, he'd have to get dinner ready and get me out to the ball diamond or the ice rink. Um, so it really helped them to have that structured meal plan. It's, it's, I was basically, I've always followed a meal plan basically my whole life until I became an adult and started living on my own. And those first, that first little while, I. Uh, I just broke free from that and had a lot more flexibility. And then I had to get back to the simple structure in order to get my weight back under control and to not only get lean, but stay lean after 40. Um, that was kind of a ramble. I'm supposed to be talking about a lot of emotional stuff, the, the emotions, like how it's impacted me. Um, so again, yeah, like I just, I never imagined that I'd be wearing a shirt at the beach, it just, it blows my mind that I allowed myself to get to that point. But again, like I said, we're all human. We all struggle. We've all been through similar journeys, similar challenges, and it's emotional, man. Like it zapped my confidence. It, I did go into a depression. Um, a lot of it had to do with my weight, with my eating. Um, I wasn't a heavy, heavy drinker, but I was drinking every day. Like it was, to come home and have two, three bottles of beer. Um, on the weekends, maybe you drink more. It's like get drunk on the weekends sometimes. So there was that, there was just eating in excess. I could, just couldn't control my eating there. But yeah, it just, it's that, that full bloated feeling, the wanting to cover up, just feeling embarrassed of, of my physique, just not feeling comfortable in my skin, just not feeling congruent with who I am. But it was all those different things like tying up my skates, tying up my laces, just any time where I had to bend over, sit down, just catch a glimpse in my mirror. Like even at hockey in the dressing room, like those guys knew I was a personal trainer and just not wanting them to see my gut, just kind of cover myself up. So it was an emotional battle for myself. And now I'd love to hear from you. So if you could please take a moment to drop a comment down below to let me know if you can relate to any of these experiences and share any of your own personal experiences in dealing with the emotional impact of carrying around some excess fat. Again, it doesn't matter how little it is or how much you have gained. Um, I would love to, to hear from you. Again, we are not alone in this. We are, your stories are definitely going to cause other men over 40 to nod their head and go, oh my God, I thought I was the only one going through these experiences. So please, 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 let's be open, let's be honest, let's be real, and let's share our experiences together. This is, I can tell you, like it, it was heartbreaking for me to really come to that rock bottom realization and, and, and think to myself, like what, like I say, what have I done to myself? Like as just casually in this conversation here, but like when I was thinking that to myself in that moment, it was, it was heartbreaking for me to really realize like how did I allow myself to gain 50 pounds of fat? I've been lean and athletic all my life. I'm a personal trainer, a physique coach who knows everything that he should be doing to stay in shape and I just couldn't follow my own advice. It was, it was devastating. And, I, and there was, there was those moments of guilt. There was those moments of disgust, those moments of self pity. And I really had to kind of mourn um, before I could move on. But it just, 
I, again, like I said, it was enough was enough. I couldn't go on living like that. Again, it just, it didn't feel congruent with who I am. It's like I was living a lie. It just I wasn't being true to myself. And that was a big, big turning point for me, realizing that I need to live my truth. I need to, my body needs to be a billboard for what I'm feeling inside, what I want to get out to the world. And I just found like I was just down in the dumps and and just how, like when you're when you're carrying around the excess fat, you just don't carry yourself as confidently, as proud. And I just wasn't putting out the energy to the world that I want to, to put out there. So I hope you can relate to this. I hope you appreciate my openness and honesty here. I'm sure I've got a lot more stories. And again, you're gonna read a lot of them in the Jack Death For You book that will be coming out soon. So really excited to, to get even more raw and real with you guys there. Um, again, all in hopes to that you realize that you're not alone in this experience, that we, we're all going through similar challenges, similar struggles. And if I can do it, you can do it as well because there are other men over 40 who are been experiencing these struggles, have overcome those struggles and lived their truth and um, just continue to improve and live their best lives. Again, I hope you enjoyed today's podcast. If you did, please do me a favor and smash that thumbs up button. I'd really, really appreciate it. If you know a fellow bro who would benefit from watching today's podcast, please do him a favor and share it with them. Before you go, don't forget to download your free guide, Jacked After 40. Have yourself an amazing day. Catch you in the next video.